The purpose of this video is to help you select study buildings as part of the Bird Window Collisions project. Selecting study buildings is one of the first things you want to do um, because you can't participate in any of the other activities until you have all your buildings selected and know what you're going to study. So for instance, you can't conduct carcass surveys and you can't measure the factors associated with study buildings or any of the factors within the um, study area. So you can't measure window area, for instance, and you can't estimate percent vegetation using a geographic information system. This video lists the different protocols for selecting study buildings. And within each protocol, we have sample video clips and pictures that help illustrate the messages we're trying to send. The first protocol is to choose buildings of various sizes. Maybe a good start is to get a campus map of the campus in which you work, which will show you uh, all the different types of buildings that are available to study. This is a campus map of uh, Augustana College where I work, and you can see there are large buildings, medium-sized buildings, and smaller residential houses that I could choose to study. It's important to remember that buildings need to have sheet glass in the exterior and you can see this building has a, a lot of sheet glass in the exterior but some buildings have little to no sheet glass and you just want to travel around your study area and make sure that buildings have sheet glass. This is a house that on the surface looks pretty good but many of the windows, many or most of the windows are covered by screening material like this window right here and if most of the windows of a house are covered by screens then that basically reduces the amount of exterior exposed exterior sheet glass and you'd want to avoid a situation like this as well. Number two, there should be variation among buildings in the percent vegetation within about a 50 meter buffer. At this point in the project, you don't need to know exactly how much vegetation surrounds a building, but using an aerial photo I'll show you in a second, you could get a general impression of how much vegetation there is. So for example, using Google Earth, you can get a really good idea of how vegetation is spread throughout your study area. This is a top view aerial photograph of the Augustana College campus, and the red line that you see here represents the campus boundary. And so you can see within the campus, there are patches of really good vegetation, or a lot of vegetation, areas where there's moderate amounts of vegetation, in areas where there's very little or no vegetation surrounding study buildings. So this will give you a really good general impression of, of where buildings are situated and how to evaluate them to eventually include uh, for the long term. I want to emphasize that after you select study buildings, then we'll go and we will use a geographic information system to estimate the percent vegetation within that 50 meter buffer. So considering protocols one and two that I just went over, you should stratify buildings both in size, that's to say small buildings, medium and large buildings, and vegetation, uh, and that's to say places with lots of green space and places with little green space, that will result in a minimum of six buildings that you'll eventually choose to study. So for example, this is an aerial photo with a view of Augustana College with a minimum of six buildings we may uh, have included as study buildings. And I'll zoom in here. And these six buildings range in size and in setting in terms of vegetation. So for example, here's a large building with a lot of vegetation surrounding it. Here's a large building with relatively little vegetation. Here are two medium-sized buildings, one surrounded by a lot of vegetation, one surrounded by relatively little. And here are two small buildings, they're actually residential houses, one surrounded by a lot of vegetation and the other surrounded by relatively little vegetation. However, at Augustana we wanted to include more study buildings, but we're stu we still stratified the size and the 
the setting, the vegetation setting in which those buildings are found. And those 12 buildings are shown here in red, where we have a mix of building size ranging from large, 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 so four large buildings. And all four of these buildings are in a, a different, uh, in different amounts of vegetation. Here are four medium-sized buildings, again in different amounts of vegetation. And then here are three, or I'm sorry, four small buildings in, with different amounts of vegetation surrounding them. So there's there's different ways of approaching this, just so long as you stratify, stratify building size and the vegetation that surrounds it. Number four, buildings should be no closer to each other than 100 meters. For example, you can use Google Earth to measure distances between buildings to make sure that they're at least 100 meters apart from each other. And you do that using, you pushing this button, which is the, which brings up the ruler function. And then within the ruler button, uh, there are several different ways of, of measuring things. Choose the line, which is already selected here. And meters you can also choose among several different options, but choose meters. And then what will happen is, is the cursor will change to something that looks like that. And you just simply draw a line from that building to that building. You can see that it is a hundred and over 160 meters that separates these two buildings. Let's try a different one. And actually I can zoom, zoom in on this. Reset the tilt. All right, so let's see the distance between this building here and this building. And you can see it's 126 meters between this building and this building. It's 200, almost 250 meters. So it's a very easy way of, of calculating or estimating distances between buildings. Number five, get permission from the appropriate authority to study buildings at Augustana. I contacted both our facilities department to the department that sort of does all the maintenance on all the buildings and the campus security about the type of project this was and how field workers would go about uh, doing their work. And I emphasized that, that workers would be thoroughly trained and especially to uh, behave in ways that respect the privacy of any building occupants. We also included one privately owned building, and to do that, I sent a letter to the building owner explaining what kind of research I'd like to do with that building, and the building owner was nice enough to, to grant us permission to walk around their building and, and look for uh, carcasses. I have a, a permission request letter that I'll put up on the website, and you can use this form letter to send uh, permission requests to uh, private uh, building owners if that's what you'd like to do. Well, I hope this video was helpful in allowing you to see how to approach selecting study buildings. I'd just uh, like to emphasize that um, at this point we're, we're using general maps of buildings that are available and we're using Google Earth to look at general vegetation patterns on our study sites. And if you follow the protocols in this video for how to select study buildings, we'll be perfectly fine in terms of getting uh, buildings with different amounts of window area in them and buildings that are in different vegetation settings. It's only after we select study buildings that we will more precisely measure how much window area is in each of those buildings with actually by measuring them with a ruler uh, and also in terms of estimating the percent vegetation within a 50 meter buffer around buildings. We'll, we'll use a computer to measure the amount of vegetation. Please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or comments you might have.